Okay, now we're going to be demonstrating calibration of backpack sprayers, both single nozzle sprayers as well as uh, boom sprayers. Now calibration really entails three major aspects. The first is the volume of solution in which you're applying. Normally the carrier is water, sometimes it can be oil, but volume is how much are you applying per acre. The second aspect is the speed at which you're going. Now we're talking about walking here, so the speed of one person's walking pace may be different from another, and that has to be an important factor in calibration. And the third aspect of calibration is the area in which you're spraying. How big an area are you spraying? Those three aspects are critical to understand before you can properly calibrate an herbicide. Once you know those, then you know the rate at which you want to apply an herbicide, and you'll know how much herbicide to add to your backpack tank in order to get the proper application. Now, the rate is critical in applying an herbicide because selectivity is rate dependent. And that is that if you apply too much herbicide by miscalibration, you may cause some serious ecological damage and you may also injure some desirable plants. Whereas if you calibrate and you undercalibrate, you may run into other problems by not getting proper control of your, your weed. Now, it's important to calibrate or to learn how to calibrate in groups. If you're going to be working as a large team, everybody should be calibrating together so that you can standardize your calibration. So we're going to demonstrate calibration of backpack sprayers, and Guy Kaiser, working with John Ron Caroni, a farm advisor in Napa County, are going to show you how to calibrate backpack sprayers for both single nozzle as well as boom sprayers. Spot treatments are one of the most common ways of treating invasive plants because they don't take much, they don't take much practice, they just take some basic eyeballing and common sense. It's usually what people do when they go out into the field to, uh, to treat clumps of plants that are uh, individual and distinct from uh, whatever, uh, whatever you're trying to protect. Uh, generally a spot treatment is, is done as a spray to wet treatment and this can be done just by eyeballing and seeing how much uh, water you're applying or how much spray solution you're applying to the plants. Stop when the plant is wet and stopping before the solution starts to roll off the plant because you don't want to soak the ground around, you just want to get the target. Today Guy and I are going to demonstrate how to calibrate spot spraying so that your application stays within the legal limit of rate per acre. An alternative to uh, spray to wet treatments is a low volume application which uses the same equipment and the same basic technique but you're using much less spray solution in making your treatment and there's a big advantage in uh, cost savings and material savings uh, in that uh, well, for example, in our, in our 300 gallons per acre example, I'd be able to spray with my three gallon tank, I'd be able to spray um, one one hundredth of an acre, uh, which is only about 400 square feet of plants. Um, it'd be nice if I could get uh, two or three times uh, the number of plants with one tank before I have to go back and reload. So what we're going to do is, again, a low volume treatment, and what we do is increase the uh, concentration of herbicide in the tank but decrease the amount of time spent spraying on each plant and the amount of material going onto each plant. So for example in our initial application I might be using a one half percent Roundup solution. We're going to change that up to a 1.5 percent Roundup solution and uh, make the application in one third of the amount of time. That means the same amount of Roundup goes on to each, uh, each plant but uh, we're only spending a third the amount of time and we're making a third as many trips back to the truck to reload. At, at this point we're going to uh, determine the rate of flow for 15 seconds. I don't think we want to do a whole minute because that would just be too much uh, spray solution. Yes. So anyway, Guy, three, two, one, go. Our flow rate is 330 milliliters in 15 seconds. And now Guy's going to, to be doing the uh, uh, spot spraying and estimating our uh, coverage area so then we can get a rate to, to make sure that our flow rate and rate of application of herbicide is well within legal limits. Okay, Here we go. That. Three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four. I almost missed that last one. Uh, you know it's going to be it's 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 going to be a little hard to keep up that kind of speed for the whole 
the whole application day, I might want to switch to a smaller nozzle size. Yeah, and we'd have to recalibrate to do that, but that may not be a bad idea in this situation. John and Guy discussed two very important topics that I'd like to elaborate on. One was using an herbicide within its legal limit in a spot application, and the second one was the importance of measuring your volume output in your nozzle sprayer. John measured 330 mils per 15 seconds of output. That can be calculated to get 0.35 gallons per minute. Guy mentioned that in a spray-to-wet application, he was applying herbicide three times longer than a low volume treatment, and in the area that he sprayed, which was 1.5 square meters, and that's equal to 15 square feet, he took four seconds to apply a low volume treatment. That would be 12 seconds if he was to apply a spray-to-wet treatment. 12 seconds represents 20% of a minute. So if you multiply 0.35 gallons per minute times 20% of a minute, then Guy applied 0.07 gallons in that 12 seconds within that 1.5 square meters. Now we need to calculate how much acreage we're applying. So if the area that they're treating is 1.5 square meters, that's equal to 15 square feet. An acre, square feet in an acre, is 43,560. So you divide 15 square feet by 43,560 square feet per acre, and that gives you 0.00034 acres. So that's what they applied in that area of 1.5 square meters. So now we just simply calculate how many gallons they're applying per acre. We know the number of gallons at 0.07 gallons. We divide that by the acres, which is 0.00034 acres, and that is equal to 206 gallons per acre. 200 gallons per acre is about standard for a spray-to-wet treatment, and that's about what they were at. Now, based on what Guy was saying of treating low volume at one-third the time, then a low volume treatment would be one-third of 206 gallons per acre, which would be equivalent to about 69 gallons per, per acre in a low volume treatment. So now let's use that idea and talk about how you want to avoid over-applying an herbicide beyond the legal limit in a spot application. Let's use Milestone as an example and pretend like we are treating an area that's infested with yellow star thistle. Now the legal limit for the rate of milestone on a spot treatment is 14 ounces per acre. Let's say we're applying milestone at one quarter of a percent milestone in a spray solution and we're applying a spray to wet application. And so we're, we're applying at 200 gallons per acre. So if you take a quarter of a percent of milestone times 200 gallons per acre, that is equal to 0.5 gallons of herbicide applied per acre, which is equal to 64 ounces of herbicide per acre. And you can clearly see that 64 ounces is well above the legal limit of 14 ounces per acre. Now let's say that only 20% of the area was actually covered in yellow star thistle, and so you're only spot spraying 20%. 20% of 64 ounces is 12.8 ounces of herbicide applied per acre, and that's within the legal limit. But if you had 50% of your area covered with yellow star thistle, you would be applying 32 ounces of herbicide per acre, and that would be outside the legal limit. So it's very important to understand how much herbicide you're going to apply, what your level of infestation is, what your rate is. If you had about 50% area and you wanted to use a spot application, you may have to go far below 0.25 or a quarter of a percent of milestone in your tank in order to be within that legal limit. John and Guy demonstrated calibration for single nozzle sprayers. That only requires one nozzle and so it's much easier to do. Those single nozzle sprayers have the advantage of allowing the applicator to better target individual plants and also to walk on more difficult terrain. 
The same principles hold true for backpack sprayers with boom attachments. However, boom sprayers, either backpack or vehicle mounted, are often used with broadcast rather than spot or directed applications. In addition, it's more difficult to walk in uneven terrain when using a boom sprayer. The calibration principles, however, are similar, except that the area treated is much larger with boom sprayers, and also there are more nozzles to calibrate and also to check for damage.